Hello and welcome back to the channel guys, I'm your host Nobody, and today we're going to continue the long play of the original Ratchet & Clank for the PS2, released in 2002. So, I was, I was, I planned on recording this like an hour ago, uh, but instead of pressing load game, I was so anxious I went ahead and pressed new game, went onto the save file, and just completely eradicated uh, the save I had, so I... Went ahead and replayed a little bit. I have a little bit money, more money than I did. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this blaster, and we'll go ahead and fill the ammo up as well. So the only thing different uh, from the original recording I did yesterday is I, I was a little bit more diligent. I missed one golden bolt on the first planet we went to. Um, that was my mistake. Well, I went ahead and grabbed that, and I was just that much more diligent about bolts, so the end result is I have more bolts. Uh, do we want to do this? Yeah, we want to do this. We want to go ahead and break that grappling Welcome hook. Welcome to the Captain Quirk Fitness Course. If you're strong enough, fast enough, and clever enough to beat my fitness challenge, you will receive a reward from my head trainer. Simply make your way to the third island to complete the course. Good luck. Quirk Enterprises is not responsible for sprains, broken bones, snapped tendons, bruised egos, or accidental death incurred while taking the challenge. Excuse me, Captain, but we have more pressing issues. We urgently need your assistance. Clank? Yes? Do you notice anything unusual about Captain Quark? Well, I find the fact that he has a spring where his leg should be to be quite puzzling. And why do you think that is? Possibly an injury incurred while battling evil? This isn't the real Captain Quark, you numbskull. It's a robot. Oh. God, man. Plank is... Plank is naive to a fault. Uh, precious as hell. So, uh, you know, something came to mind when I was re-recording the first few levels that we did. Um, just how unbelievably high the replayability for these games are. Uh, it didn't really feel like a chore. A lot of games, like, today, um, they, they just, they don't have that charm, you know, the replayability factor. A uh, perfect example of a really, really good game that, uh, has no fault, you know, 100% playability, uh, Elden Ring. So, it's kind of a little late for me to, uh, it's kind of a little late for me to... You know, start a playthrough with uh, Elden Ring as its its fame has kind of died down, kind of tracking things, you know, on Twitch, um, and it's just it's not doing that well. And, you know, as far as the retention rate for its viewership. Now I say that, and here I am playing a 20-year-old game on YouTube. Uh, so I mean, it kind of invalidates the point I'm trying to make, but Elden Ring, man, it was, it was a very, very solid game. Um, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was actually my first, uh, experience with a Souls game. Um, never really had the desire to play a Souls game. Yeah, we can, we, we got time. Uh, before that, and I, I had no desire to. Uh, but just something about the open world and the medieval isk. Um, These moving walls also function as jump slots. Jump and jump again to kick off the walls in midair yep, yep, until yep. you reach the top. They kind of tell you that a little bit late. You've already done it. <laughs> so, you know, the open world aesthetic mixed with the medieval, the magic. I, I, I didn't like, for example, Skyrim. I, I. I didn't enjoy that game, or I didn't think I would, until my stepson, uh, you know, was playing it in the house, and I just watched it, and you know, over time, I kind of, I kind of got convinced. I'm like, you know what, man, maybe, maybe I should give this a shot, and I did, and I, and I really enjoyed it. There was a little bit more replayability with um, Skyrim, in my opinion. Uh, we'll continue this after we talk to. Held you here. Listen up, you lard balls. That was the most pathetic display I have ever seen on that obstacle course. What do you mean? We finished the circuit, ma'am. Oh, 
ja, aber das ist Wieg. Wieg, Wieg! Wenn I was competing, I would devour crosses like that for breakfast. <laughs> Bet that's not all. If it were up to me, you would drill, drill, drill for the rest of the day. But somehow you managed to impress that fool Captain Quark. Captain Quark knows about us? He certainly does. And worst of all, he wants me to give you a prize for that ridiculous performance. Or give cool, it up. What is it? I'm supposed to give you a swing shot. So you can sway to and fro like little insects. All right, let's see it. Not so fast. Today, the two of you disgraced my obstacle course, so I am going to make you pay. But that prize is ours from the captain. That's not fair. Too bad. Life's not fair. <laughs> Ain't that true? Sweet. I bet Captain Quark uses stuff like this all the time. Ha! Real men can swing without silly toys like that. The two of you make me sick. I would die for a slingshot in real life. Congratulations on your new Gadgetron slingshot. Use it on standard Versa targets like the ones nearby. If the target is out of view, use the L1 button to aim. Okay. So, you know, Skyrim was a fabulous game. Uh, plenty of replayability, in my opinion. I did spend you know, a few hundred hours into it. Uh, eventually, it did get worn out and I just moved on from it. But I enjoyed it while I was there. <coughs> so, like, Elden Ring. Uh, super, super, super awesome game, first and foremost. Um, very, very hard to find a fault with that game. Uh, yeah, shut up. So, like... Every aspect of it. It was difficult. It was challenging. Uh, that's a huge problem I've had with games, or at least more modern-ish games. Um, a lot of these newer titles and releases just kind of hold your hand all the way through, and it didn't used to be that way, and it, it was a joy. It was an absolute joy to not be handheld throughout an entire game. You know, just try, I gotta figure things out for myself. It allowed me to go to areas that I had absolutely no business going to, and the game would very, very quickly. Oh, God, he shot his buddy here. Yeah, shut up. But, it, you know, the game would just let you do what you wanted to do, just like in, you know, many, many older games. It didn't. It didn't hold your hand, and I, I deeply, deeply appreciate. Oh, jeez. All right, hold on. We actually need to aim for this. There we go. Oh well, that was quick enough. Uh, the level design was pretty good. The release was pretty good. That's something that really can't be said for a lot of other games being released. The thing that kind of comes to mind the most would be things like. Uh, Cyberpunk. Now, Cyberpunk went completely under my radar for a while. Somehow, I know you guys are probably thinking, well, geez, man, how, how'd that happen? And again, you know, my stepson uh, kind of led me on to knowing about it. And I was like, God, man, that is just so cool. I love, I love the whole Cyberpunk aesthetics in games, or just in general, like movies, sci-fi. And I'm just like, man, that that is a game for me. And, you know, it released, and I was real hesitant because, you know, all the videos started coming out at how absolutely busted that game was. Um, almost to an unplayable state. Uh, so my experience with it wasn't on PC. I didn't have the PC yet when uh, that game came out. So I bought it on PS4 Pro uh, that I ended up, you know, picking up. About a year or so prior at a uh, GameStop. You guys remember those? Uh, we'll continue this town vote in just a second. You gotta hear Big Al. That's the man we saw on the Infobot. Remember? He knows Captain Quark. Hey, you're that robot guy, right? No, actually, I build robots. I myself am not a robot guy, per se. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> I like him. So, now that we've cleared that up, what can I do for you? Well, we saw your Infobot announcement. 
You were with Captain Quark. We're trying to find Captain Quark. We thought you could help us. Your logic is commendable. However, I haven't seen Captain Quark since we shot that commercial. Say, do you run on standard XP-18 sister boards? Version 7.66. Back at ya. I may be able to help you out after all. How does a helipack upgrade sound? Upgrade? Natch. Since he's a 766, I could have the little guy up and flying in no time. Of course, uh, I'll just need my fee for service. Hell yeah. Okay, this won't hurt a bit. Hey, wait. <laughs> oh, jeez. Ratchet, am I cool now? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you the man, Clank. You're welcome. Alright. Uh, I believe we split now. I thought some of this stuff was breakable. Try using the helicopter boost jump feature to climb these boxes. Press the R1 button to crouch, then jump. Finally, we can move at a relatively acceptable speed. Stupid ass, this is so cheeky. You'll need your new yep, yep. stretch jump feature to cross yep, this yep. gap. Alright, shut up. So, you know, Ratchet, they're not Ratchet playing but Elden Ring, man. I thoroughly enjoyed my playthrough. Uh, challenging platforms. Try using the glide feature of your new helipad. Yeah. Jump, and then press shut up. But, you know, I, I, I tried New Game Plus. I tried New Game Plus, and it was it was enjoyable. Uh, kind of. I felt like I, I was so thorough with my first playthrough. Oh, jeez, I actually died first death uh, so far. Um, I was so thorough with my first playthrough because I wanted... I wanted to experience everything that game had to offer because I was enjoying my time so much. And I can't remember a time, uh, at least very, you know, re at least recently, where a game was complete, you know, that was released was, for the most part, completed. You know, it wasn't janky from the get-go. Uh, the publishers, or excuse me, the developers, actually did their due diligence and made sure that the game would release at an acceptable state unlike it seems like every single de uh, developer nowadays you know they'll just oh man we got we got something that's technically beta um we're just we're just gonna rush it out now and we'll fix it later you know just just bear with us give us give us the money for a half finished game right and uh Maybe, just maybe, you know, we'll uh, we'll get it fixed in a timely manner, and you can enjoy the game you, you know, you paid for, uh, or even worse, you know, God forbid the game's free to play, then they're just gonna nickel and dime you to absolute death. Uh, perfect. Another perfect example of that would be just really anything EA. Um, or, you know, like Diablo Immortal, which, god, dude, that was a shame. I have many, many memories. I grew up indirectly playing Diablo. Uh, my dad would play it, you know, in his home office, and I would just be mesmerized and watch it for hours, and I was like, man, this is so, so cool. This game, this game really has this amazing aesthetic uh, and it really teleported you into this other world now I was so young I couldn't give you like more specifics on the game like I couldn't tell you if it was Diablo 1 or Diablo 2 um, but it was just so unique so unique and you didn't have to worry you know oh man if I buy this game is it actually going to be finished? You know, is it, is it going to be done? Am I going to get what I paid for? Uh, such a huge problem with games today. Man, there's a lot more. Is there another spawner that I'm just not catching right off the rip? I don't think so. There we go. My bolts, bitch. But, you know... Uh, Oh, we gotta do the whole obstacle to get to it. I'm lazy, guys. I'm using the flamethrower to open all my boxes. Uh, I'm sure you guys pretty much did the same. 
on your little playthroughs. Or if you have, you know, if you've played the game before. And if you haven't, I highly encourage you to play this game. But, you know, Blizzard, man. They were such a powerhouse. It was, it was what, Blizzard and Valve back in the early 2000s, late 90s, that just, like, completely owned the market. Uh, they were, they were, they were setting new industry standards left and right, and everybody wanted a piece of the, the Blizzard or the, uh, or the Valve Pie. Uh, we'll try the blaster. I'm not, I'm not too keen on the blaster just yet. A little wonky. We don't. I don't. Yeah, we don't have strafe, do we? Yeah, no, we don't have strafe in the first game. So the blaster is a little, a little bit out there to use. I don't want to go on there yet. So like, you know, Half Life. Half. Oh, geez. Even to this day, Half Life is such a name to be. Can you? I. I don't really recall a game that just was, you know, well, I can, you know, Halo when it came out. It was, it was such, it, it wasn't just a game, it was, it was an event. It, it was something that just, the whole world was mesmerized by, and for many, many, many years, you know, the constant phrase Halo Killer was used to market their games just because of how high of a president the uh, Halo games achieved. Is there anything important over there? I mean, there's a little money. Yeah, I mean, just... I don't know, man. I, I just... I wish... I wish the industry would... We kind of revert back to some old ways, you know. We don't need the highest, at least for me personally. I don't care if it's got the. Oh my God, it's so realistic graphics. Uh, oh my God, you know, it's got this never-ending campaign that you can play for thousands and thousands of hours doing the same monotonous task over and over. Um, I just want a good game. Like I, I miss, I miss these these fun titles. Uh, I don't have a... Jesus Christ. Hit him! I don't have, like, a PS5. Uh, I'm sure many of you guys don't. Kind of a rare commodity in today's ecosystem. Oh, jeez. You bitch. Yeah, t take that. And that. God, I forgot how bad the... Uh, the bullet lead was on these trains. There you go. Take that. Take that. Take that. We're turning. Oh, jeez. The bullets. There we go. I would love, I would absolutely adore having a PS5. I would love to play the new Ratchet and Clank. I'm very stoked about it. I mean, I've watched when, especially when it first came out, I was just so excited for a new Ratchet and Clank. Uh, I watched like two or three different people playing through the game and I was just like man this this isn't bad for once you know this isn't bad that's, and it, that's that's such a uh, to my knowledge I don't recall it being a busted game get out of man die yeah the, the blaster sucks on the first game I will get you in just a second but it was a game that was for the most part it released in one piece and, you know, it was simple. It doesn't go on forever. It's not like this endless game that you'll have to grind forever. There's no in, there's no microtransactions. Which, oh my god, I hate microtransactions. I think those single-handedly have just broken the industry. Uh, and just all these illegitimate practices. Greetings, Executive Chairman Drek. Dispense with the pleasantries, Lieutenant. My sources tell me you're behind schedule. You must prepare this planet to be harvested for our new world. Yes, sir. As you can see, everything is moving along as planned. I'm counting on you, Lieutenant. And as your former commander can tell you, I don't take disappointment well. Yes, sir. I won't fail. 
Greg is destroying yet another planet. Yeah, but if that's the kind of help he's getting, I don't think we have anything to worry about. You should not underestimate Chairman Drek. He is quite dangerous. We must find Captain Quark. Look, that lieutenant doesn't seem so tough. Let's take him out ourselves. Perhaps we can persuade the lieutenant to tell us where Drek is. <laughs> now you're talking. Sweet, 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 sweet. Okay, nothing else. Uh, what's? Oh no, I saw something. I saw something. I'm doing. I'm gonna go back up. Potentially, I think. I think there was something up here. Ah, there was. Oh, you sly dogs, you. There we go. Uh, so, in saying all that, and I know I rambled for a minute about that subject, uh, what games do you guys have just, like, these over-the-top fond memories of? Uh, we're going to head this way real quick. There's a golden bolt up here that I want to snag. It's not too far. It's right here. But what games, like, just defined your childhood? I don't... You know, care if you're my age, older. Uh, if you're very young, like uh, let's say under 20, um, born in the mid 2000s, like what games did you guys grow up with that you're just like, I don't care how old I get. Uh, I thought there was a gold bowl here. Am I just delusional? Is that a different spot? What's going on here? I'm thinking it was a different spot. Ah, oh well. Oh well. But yeah, what game? Just be, you know, no matter how much time can pass, you're just like, I will love this game for the rest of my life, and nobody can tell me otherwise. Uh, for me, you know, obviously the Ratchet and Clank series. 100% such a childhood defining game franchise for me. Uh, Spyro. I love Spyro. I, I cannot tell you how many times I've replayed those games. Uh, let's see, what else? What else was just like this this massive game? I mean, there's a bunch of games that I played when I was younger. Twisted Metal. Hell yeah, Twisted Metal. Uh, so you'll notice that Metris, or Metropolis, excuse me, and the outpost or kind of reversed. Uh, I picked up the info bots in reverse order, and that's shown there. Uh, and I had to restart my playthrough because I accidentally de deleted my recording. I thought I was hitting the yes, load. Yes, quite lovely. That should just about do it. Commander, we are finished with this world. Commence towing our planet to its next destination. Lieutenant! Yes, sir. You have fulfilled your tree quota. Barely. We are ready to return to base. Not so fast, Lieutenant. Just because we don't need any more trees doesn't mean they should have them. Destroy everything. <laughs> <coughs> so... What, what defined a game that I just really liked? Um... So, like, me and my brother, uh, we're about a year and a half apart, um, in age. Any game that me and him could play together was what I wanted to do. You'll need a Gagatron trespasser to get past this Oh, yeah, time. that's on that other planet. our scans do not show a trespasser. Yeah, we'll do, we'll get that. That's back on that, uh, night planet. But any game I could play with my brother, man, was was where I was at. Um, I played a lot of Tekken. If you guys know what that is, it is kind of one of those like kind of 2D-ish side-profiled uh, fighter games. I'm not sure if any of you youngins in the audience are familiar. Dude. Hmm. Well, we can't afford it regardless. Uh, and there was, there was plenty of single player games that I enjoyed playing. So, like, you know, you guys kind of recall there was uh, 
there was a lot of games back in the day that was made uh, off of movies. So like there was this Toy Story 2 game for the PS1 that I loved. It was janky as shit. Like the graphics were nothing to write home about, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, same with like, let me get over there again. I completely forget. Um, you know, like the Twist and Metals, like for the PS1, like they were, they were jank. They were nothing pretty to look at, but holy crap, the the graphics, or not the graphics, the gameplay was so engaging, so unbelievably engaging. I haven't had a chance to play the, I can't believe it, I can't remember if it came out on the PS3 or the PS4, but there was another Twist of Metal released, uh, the newest title. Apparently it did real bad, they shut down the servers. Uh, but from what I could see, like it didn't look, it didn't look like Twisted Metal. I think there was, there wasn't a lot of storylines. Uh, you could take Sweet Tooth out of his car. Uh, again, if you're not familiar, uh, Twisted Metal is a combat royal. It's kind of like a royal game. It's like it's just a combat game with cars. You know, you'd have so many cars. They, each driver would have a storyline associated with the driver. And you would just go around, kill everybody on an individual level, and you would unlock the story, and potentially, in some of the games, just outright unlock really cool characters. Like, you could unlock Sweet Tooth, which is the mascot of the game. This serial killer, murderous clown that drives an ice cream truck. Uh, I, love, I love the franchise so much that uh, the only tattoo that I have that's related to a video game uh, is actually of Twisted Metal. I have Sweet Tooth tattooed on my arm. Love the tattoo. That's another thing. I'm curious if there's any game that left, you know, an impression on you guys so viscerally that you went and got a tattoo or, or you just went on this epic hiatus of, I need to collect every single collectible of this game humanly possible. One of the coolest things my stepson got for me was, uh, uh, what are they, what are they, I gotta, I gotta turn around, what do they call these things? The pop figures? Yeah, pop figures. So, there was a pop figure of Sweet Tooth with his ice cream truck, and he told me about it, he said, hey man, I went to this, uh, I went to a GameStop and I saw a Funko Pop. Yeah, that's what they're called, Funko Pop. Uh, I saw this Funko Pop of Sweet Tooth, and I like lost my shit. I'm like, and you didn't fucking buy it for me. <laughs> yeah. So he, you know, I think throughout the next week he actually went back to uh, uh, GameStop and got it for me. Um, because I don't, I don't know which GameStop he saw it out. There's there's a few in the area. I thought that was just like the absolute coolest thing he could have done. Um, I don't really have any guns I'm too happy about. I can't wait till there's a vacuum gun on this level. Uh, I really want it. Really want it bad. Really good for crowd control. The flamethrower is alright, but like, it doesn't do a lot of damage. Jeez, come on now. I remember these guys being such a dick. They were like stupid accurate. The controls on some of these older games are not as precise as I would want them to be. So after especially playing like a lot of these modern games and going back and playing, you know, some of these older titles here, it, it really makes you appreciate how far controls have come. They're just so much more precise. Uh, this is a fairly clunky game, but it's not, like, it's not that bad. There's definitely a lot of games that released around this time, or even later, that's just got these abysmal, oh, the re okay, alright, yeah, we'll just start using the wrench then. Yeah, they have, like, abysmal controls, they're almost impossible to play. A perfect example of that would be, like, so I did get 
I, I spoke on this earlier. Uh, I got the Toy Story 2 game for the PS1, and I was I was playing it actually. I think just a couple months back, and it was so cool because me and my brother used to play it, and you know it was a one-player game, so one one brother or one of us would play it, and the other one would, you know would wait until he finished the level. And then we would just kind of hand the controller over. Oh, oh you guys are such... I hate these guys. But yeah, I, I try... And, and the cool thing, you know, he was he was with me when I when I got the game again. And we were chilling out. We haven't done that in so many fucking years, man. It, it, it really made me feel good. I, I, I really cherish that. Um, oh, I miss him. But... The controls were so unbelievably jank. I couldn't. I couldn't do anything. Uh, we, you know, we have. We as gamers have become so. We were so tolerant to these bad controls because we just didn't know any better. And uh, definitely going back really put that into perspective how bad we had it as far as you know controls. I'd 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 make a solid argument that. Gameplay was a lot better, um, but you know some games are just not as good as we remember either. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, an example, I did here recently pick up an older title that I used to play way back in the day, and I was so nostalgic for it. And then I played it, and I was like, "This isn't how I remembered it," and I was I was I was really disappointed. I think oh uh, you know what. It, I think it was, um, you guys are probably going to chew me out for it. Okay. Uh, it was Halo. Of all things, it was Halo. Uh, I picked up the Master Chief Collection. And I, I started up Combat Evolved, the first game in the franchise. And I, was, I played through a couple levels, and I was left with this empty feeling. Like, something's... It's it's how I remembered it, but it's not as good anymore. And I think what that probably boils down to is just oversaturation or overstimulation. Uh, a lot of these newer games, like they do anything and everything to overstimulate the player. Like you can see right here, like there's not a lot going on. Some basic geometries, you got some textures. You know, just a few assets that move around in the game, and a basic soundtrack, and that and that's really all it was. Very very simple gameplay, but like with these newer games, there's just so much to do. Uh, you can't just have a basic shooter, a uh, looter shooter. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what would they classify this game as? A collect this game would be considered like a collectathon, and oh god, it's probably my favorite franchise or favorite genre of games is collectathons. But you just run around, you collect everything your eyes gaze upon, and that's it. But with these newer games, they, they can't just they just they can't leave it at just that. So. Let's say they make the same game today. So you got crafting involved. You got all these experience trees and uh, all these different side quests. You know, you can do this, do that. And uh, you know what? Can we get this guy? Yeah, yeah. I remember. Let's get. Oh man, I was trying to get that guy to kill the other guy. Oh, uh -uh, you bitch. Uh, ow. But, and, and you know, it's 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 kind of a double-edged sword there, so I really, really enjoy all these mechanics that make the games more and more complicated. Um, oh, I love this gun. Get out of here, you bitch. You're in my way. There we go. In my damn way. I love this gun. And I've grown to really, really enjoy and look forward to these mechanics. Um, and I think overall, like, it's an improvement, right? It, it's not something to look down on. Gadgetron suck cannon can vacuum up multiple enemies, then fire them out as high-caliber missiles. Caution, enemies must be small enough to fit inside the barrel. Nice. 
But you know, it it kind of it kind of taints. Oh no, I didn't jump. Oh well, that's fine. We were at a checkpoint. Oh, it just fucking reset me right back to the beginning. I know there was something else to do on this map, but we need. Oh yeah, we do need the other thing. So let's go ahead and go back to the swamp planet. You know, if we got the the grappling hook now, we can do that one part. And I do believe the tool, the gadget we need for this map is on that map. But yeah, like, all these beautiful mechanics and things in these modern games uh, kind of overstimulated us to the point where, you know, sometimes when we go back to these old, older games, they're just... They just don't stimulate the same way that they used to, which is a shame. It kind of taints the memory of these games and the very, very lovely memories that most of us, you know, achieved or gathered as a kid. Hell yeah, vacuum. And we could shoot him out. Take that, you bitch. So, I think. I don't know if this is the thing. It's been, what, a year since the new Ratchet and Clank release? It's been about a year since I've watched uh, a playthrough. I'm not sure if any of these mechanics that I'm talking about have made it its way into the newer game. If so, I mean, go ahead and tell me. Uh, but I'd like to see like a, a Ratchet and Clank with the same feel, the same vibe, uh, same lovely, lovely aesthetic, but at the same time, maybe incorporate a skill tree. And I know they do with the weapons. Like, I do know that there is a skill tree for the weapons. You can start upgrading them and um, modify them. And I do know there you can level up your guns. And we'll explore that. If, you, if there's enough interest on the series, I would love to play uh, some more of the original PS2 Ratchet and Clanks. And I can show you guys firsthand those mechanics I'm talking about. There we go. There we go. But I'd, I'd love to see it expand a little bit more. I don't know really in what way would add to Ratchet and Clank without tainting what Ratchet and Clank is. Um, I, I like the guns. I like I like the uh, the eventual mechanics that they have incorporated to level up your guns and uh, increase ammo capacity, fire rate. Um, I believe in Deadlock, I, I believe this was only a mechanic in Deadlock, but they had these awesome mods that you could add to your weapons, like give it frost damage or poison damage. And I don't think it made an appearance in any other Ratchet and Clank that I am personally aware of. Um, I would love to see that back into the games. Uh, the second game, Going Commando, you had uh, a ship that you could customize and you know, change its color, change its wings, um, change its weapon layout, its payload. Uh, it used a very special resource. I uh, can't really recall what the name of that resource was. But you had to gather it in space missions. Uh, these space combat -y type of missions, you would get this resource, rare titanium. I think that's what it was. And you would use that resource to help improve your ship so that you could even further uh, increase and modify your ship. I would love to see that. I would like to see maybe potentially... Uh, I also know in Deadlock you had land vehicles. You had like this rover. Man, it's so hard. There we go. Lasers are mounted on each ring of the Invincible Lock. Aim the lasers at the receptors on the outside ring to turn them green. Got it. All receptors must be green before the Invincible Lock. 
Uh, so I'd like to see more vehicles, potentially, in Ratchet and Clank. I would uh, love to see more customization of vehicles. I, I'm kind of playing around with the thought in my head. Like, I know some games you could actually change up and modify the gun's uh, equipment. So, like, say you could change out the barrel or change out... Um, are we going the right way? Yeah, we are. We change out the barrel, change out like the stock, change out ammo types, which Deadlock did have ammo types. Um, maybe, maybe in a future Ratchet and Clank, uh, the idea. Can we get to that bolt? I'm not gonna mess with it right now, but I think we can get to the bolt since we have the backpack now. Uh, where Ratchet just has kind of like in Jack and Dexter where he had one gun and he could change out the layout of this one, the base of the gun and it would dictate, all right, what do we do now? What's left on, the... oh, we can do this now. Greetings. Oh, uh, no, shut up. Uh, let's see, was there anything left on there? No. Is there a platinum bolt? Oh, there's two platinum bolts left. Um, where, you had this you had the base of a gun like the receiver and depending on what you added or changed on the gun would dictate how it shot how it fired how it behaved uh the ammos maybe elemental status effects which i again thoroughly enjoyed in deadlock and i really wish it would make a return but then that kind of cancels out some availability for things like uh there was a flail that you could use in some titles. You know, melee. Um, how would you incorporate the melee aspect into a gun? How would you modify it to perform those tasks? Would you have two modifiable weapons? A melee weapon and, you know, the gun itself. It's a thought. If you guys have any interesting ideas that you would personally love to see in Ratchet and Clank, or a future title of Ratchet and Clank, uh, say so in the comments. You never know. Maybe a developer. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a far cry. It's a far shot. But, you know, just maybe um, a developer or a future developer of the Ratchet and Clank series uh, will just stumble across this. I don't know if I'm going to make this. Yeah, I am. And be like, you know what, man, those are those are some kick-ass ideas. We will at least humor the thought in development of a future title. Oh, jeez. Can't remember. Uh, let's see. So, out of all the Ratchet and Clank's, like, which one did I care for the most? Believe it or not, it's not the first one. Although the first one is very, very kick ass. Uh, I'm thinking maybe, like, oh, John. Like, going commando, or. I think either going commando or deadlocked. I know a lot, at least critics of the game. Um, apparently, didn't much care for deadlocked that I can recall. Um, but I just, I love the arena. I love the fact that we have androids. We could upgrade those. Again, the upper... Uh, okay. Okay, no, no, no. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, the androids, again, you could, uh, back to that modification, um, thing I was talking about. You had these androids. Man, he just came out of his ass, didn't it? You sure showed him. I suppose I did. Is your current occupation leaving a rotten taste in your mouth? Then you need to know about BTS, Blog Tactical Research Station. Hi, I'm Supreme Executive Chairman Drek. 
and we here at BTS are seeking motivated individuals to fill positions in these exciting careers. Grind boot tester, warhead assembly technician, mutant animal husbandry, robot repair man, suck cannon test dummy, and administrative assistant. So call BTS. Build our weapons while you build your future. I'm calling BTS today. Not talking. Did you see all the cool gadgets they're making? Let's go get some. No, we must continue our search for Captain Quark. You're absolutely right. I am? Sure. We need to find Quark. Although when we find him, wouldn't it be nice to be able to tell him where Chairman Drek is? I suppose. Well, we go to the space station and talk to the scientists. They work for Drek, so they're bound to know where he is. I am unsure about your logic. Ah, uh, you think too much. Come on, let's go. So you have these drones that fought alongside you in all the different arenas of Deadlock. And as the game progresses, you can change their colors. Uh, I can't recall if you can change their weapon loadout, but you can change like their aesthetics, um, which was enough for me. You can change their heads, uh, their bodies, their colors, things like that. And it just provided for like this really, really cool experience. It was, it was very unique for the Ratchet franchise that was never really repeated. You know, there's, there's, I did go on for, you know, forever, essentially, on the subject. And just, my, my passion and love for this franchise, uh, is forever deep. But I think we're gonna call it here, guys, uh, at least for this episode. Um, if you did enjoy, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Uh, it would help me out tremendously as I am a very, very small YouTuber. And I'll see you guys in the next one.